You're listening to the Getting Social Podcast, a keep it real type podcast where we discuss entrepreneurship, marketing, and all kinds of social topics. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Getting Social Podcast. I am your host, Jeff Pollacard, and this is episode number 24. Education is a right, or at least I believe it should be. When you think about the impact that it has on a child and the opportunities that it creates, Why is it not accessible to everyone? What would our communities look like if everyone had access to education? Less crime, maybe? A safer and better environment for families, for sure. But here's another wrinkle. Education does not start at school. It starts at home. So when you are born into an uneducated household, your chances at early development as a child are really slim. This cycle makes it very difficult for underprivileged communities to thrive and get out of poverty. In this episode, I have the pleasure and privilege to have Naika Charles Daiti on the podcast. She is the founder of Project Sentan, a nonprofit organization based out of Kampiengi, Haiti. She has dedicated the past 12 years of her life to helping this charming community full of potential. I was lucky enough to visit Kampiengi myself back in 2014. And that experience changed my life, just like she is changing lives herself, giving the children in that area the hope that we should all have as human beings, the hope for a better future. Without further ado, it's time to get social. All right. Well, Naika, first of all, thank you very much for taking the time to join us on the Getting Social podcast. I know you are a very, very busy person, so I'm extremely happy that you uh, took the time to be a part of it. And you know what? Since this is a keep it real type podcast, I'm going to keep it real. I did not prepare for this podcast. No disrespect to you whatsoever. (laughs) On the opposite, it's actually because this one question might take an entire episode to answer. And I know we spoke about this a little bit behind the scenes, but I urge you to start from the beginning because when you decide to undertake such an important mission, there's no, there has to be a precedent. So let's start from the beginning. And the question actually is why Project Sentan? Well, um, first of all, thank you, Jeff. It's always great to connect with you. It's uh, I think December 2nd, 2020 already. I want to say that Project St. Anne chose me, and because Project St. Anne chose me, I feel like I have a responsibility to deliver based on how it started. So I don't think for me it's really the why, it's more the how. It started very authentically. It started with, you know, just a feeling of wanting to do something great in my community, in my mother's community, where she's born and raised, which is in Kampere, south of Haiti, near Lekai. And that was in 2008. And now, as I think about it, I can say that the why has a lot to do with love, right? Because This is a community that I've embraced from a very young age because I was born and raised in Port-au-Prince. But because my mom is from Café, it was really traditional for us to go there quite often because we had our family home there. So as I think about the way that I left Haiti back in 1991, and why Project St. Anne, there are so many whys. So things will intertwine. The way I left Haiti is pretty much the same state that Haiti is in now. And why Project St. Anne is because I feel like we need people like me and a big group of people, volunteers, that do great work for the people of Haiti to better the people of Haiti and to better an entire country. So why Project St. Anne also started because St. Anne's anniversary is on July 26. And every July 26, it's a celebration in the community of Campania where it's called Fête Champette. 
So you have live bands and people that travel from all over the world that comes in to celebrate and to just really have great family and friends time. And in 2008, I thought to myself, it's great that we get to have such a good time, but I think it's time to really give back to the community. And this is how I decided over a phone call with two people that are very dear to me as, you know, co-founders to do the Feast of St. Anne. Why? Because it's a community that really comes together around a very special time, like St. Anne's anniversary. So we decided to do a feast that year where we fed about 200 people. And I can tell you right now that has grown tremendously. And why Projects in Anne also relates to education. Because education, as we know it to be, is the number one gift that you can give to any child and honestly to any family, especially in Haiti. So as I think of why Projects in Anne, I continuously think that Projects in Anne shows me because of what Haiti means. And I'm happy. It makes me very happy to know that with this type of work, as they call it nonprofit, I don't, I, I think nonprofit doesn't really fit the description when it comes to the way that we work or maybe the way that I envision Projects in Anne, if I may say so myself. I think that why Projects in Anne and this education aspect is all the reason why I believe that we can do great things because, again, we were feeding about 200 people in 2008. And let's say this year, for example, it's a year of a pandemic. We distributed food kits to about 3,000 families. Now the education program started with about eight students. And today in 2011, and today we have 233 students in our education program. When you think about those numbers and when we started as grassroots organization, I can honestly say that Projects in Anne has given me reason to express why I'm here, why I have such a big responsibility. Like I started, I think, to say in the very beginning, I think that my why is because I do believe and I have 100% confidence that this type of work does not come to me lightly. It doesn't, um, I don't take it for granted in the sense where it's not just charity, as I often say. What's most rewarding for me is knowing that I'm helping change the world, honestly, one family at a time. You know, the work that I'm doing and the work that we're doing at Projects in Anne, if you look at it, it's what like LeBron James or Oprah Winfrey, you know, so many ordinary people too are doing. So the why for me, I have to say, is because I 100% believe that in pursuing the vision of changing and transforming lives, we can really create better people of tomorrow and a better country. So right now, as I'm talking to you, Project St. Anne has reached, I can say, a very different stage because We've been doing this Feast of St. Anne and this education program and the holidays. We do a very nice party for children. All of that is great, but, you know, there's a bigger dream. There's a bigger picture. There's a campus and there are children and young adults that, you know, can, can and will have trainings and programs that can help them. So this is where I can honestly say that whether or not this is the dream of someone else, for example, that is coming true. 
I can honestly say that this is, again, where I would say projects and Anne shows me because I never envisioned a nonprofit organization back in 2008. I just wanted to do good. I just wanted to give back, as they say. I, I can tell you that why Projects and Anne, for me, as it relates to Naika personally, is because I want to make a difference knowing that it is possible to do things differently as long as it's part of what's going to make a country, the people that are in it, better. And also, honestly, we talk about being so prideful as a nation. We have so much pride. And I think that YPSA is my, my number one pride because no matter how much we could have done differently because we're so small. I can say we've done extraordinary work, but we could have done so much differently. But one thing's for sure is that personally, consistency for me is important, which is why I will do whatever it takes to continue to make this work because PSA chose me. The community chose me. Honestly, that's how I feel. And I think this is the first time I'm sharing it in that way because Haiti is my heart. No matter how hurtful it was when I left the country back in 1991, you know, I think that being a native Haitian as myself living in New York um, since 1991, I can really say that. I want to be I want to be someone that people can believe in. That's PSA. People believe in PSA no matter how grassroots we are. And that's why right now, you know, there's a lot going on as it relates to our organizational structure because we're growing. We're growing and we're growing because people believe in the mission and People believe in results, you know, people believe in people being accountable, you know? Well, you know what? One thing that I know yeah. for sure, sorry yes, to interrupt, sorry, sorry to interrupt, yes. but one, one thing that I know for sure is I was, I was right in the beginning because I know that this question alone is a loaded, <laughs> a loaded one. And you have a lot of editing to do. No, I don't actually, because all of that is the point is that that's the reason why we're on this podcast right now. That's the reason why we're having this conversation, because I had the chance to I had a chance to see you guys in action six years ago. Exactly. And that's that basically was my introduction to to Pooja Sintan and also visiting Camping seeing firsthand what you guys are doing, it literally changed my life. I know it sounds super like dramatic, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, and cliche, but it's true. The reason it's not only because of what you guys are doing, that's obviously a major part of it, but it's also because of just seeing like a different world, a different pr perspective, um, just seeing people that are in a completely different situation that, you know, I personally am and people that I'm around with, uh, I'm not that I'm around. So it's, it's, it was an eye opening experience for me. It was also great to see the goodness in people in general and the potential, which is a lot of what you're describing also. And then through the years of, you know, developing a relationship with you guys, I've learned that you guys are super passionate about it. That's number one. Number two, the growth is, is incredible, you know, from 200 people to 3000 families, you know, in the span of 12 years from eight students to 230 something students is another incredible number. And it's just steady growth, you know, and whatever challenges come your way, um, political unrest, which we're, you know, obviously super used to, now COVID, you know, you guys still, you know, there's no excuse. You guys still find a way to keep helping these people and growing, you know, with the community. So it's something that, you know, that is important to talk about. One of the things that I talk about on this podcast actually is the responsibility that we have as entrepreneurs, professionals, leaders, 
you know, to do good. Cause you exactly, you said that I just wanted to do good. And we have a responsibility to do that. We have a responsibility to do good. I think, I mean, this is common sense because no matter how you see it, not everybody has been given equal opportunity, whatever people say it's, it's bullshit. It's not because it's not true. Some people are, are born with certain things that, and other people are not, you know, regardless. Yeah, of course you can hustle, you can make it happen, but you make, you'll be the exception, not the rule. The rule is when you're not given those things, you're, you, you will not succeed or depending on mm -hmm. what success means. But what, what it means is that financially you will struggle, you know, and then obviously health wise, you will struggle and you know, everything else because finance is everything really. If you don't have that, you basically don't have anything. And to see how very little these people have, but the hope that they see for themselves and for their kids based on, you know, what Pooja Setana has been doing is something that, you know, is life changing. So that's why it changed my life. And also why I wanted to do good as much as possible, because it's going to come back to you. It's not a matter of, oh, I can't right now. Or yeah, it's tough. Everybody has, you know, a lot of stuff mm -hmm. going on, you know, but it is part of our duty and, and that's why this episode is important to me. But speaking of the growth of Pooja Center, and I want to ask you something, you know, a little bit different. So it's going to take you to New York basically, because you left in 91, you went in New York. I'm not going to ask you how old you were because we can do math, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> 1991, uh, I assume you probably were, you know, went to school and finished your, your, your education. And then you started working in the corporate world. But my question is, how do you think this experience altogether, not only leaving Haiti in 91 and experiencing a completely different world in New York, in almost every way, like the intensity, the, the weather, the, the, the people, everything about New York is different. So leaving Haiti to go to New York and then not only through that experience, but also the experience through the corporate world and how you think it influenced the growth of PSA. So... If you can draw, draw like a parallel for us um, and, and take your time. We've got another 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually such an um, important question because a lot of what's happening now, mm -hmm. ESA's organizational structure, really has to do with my path corporately. Mm -hmm. um, I worked at L'Oreal for 14 years um, L'Oreal is one of the Fortune 500 companies, as you know. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud to have worked there because, you know, you learn a lot. You meet a lot of people. You just, you become a boss, no matter what title or whatever you have in the company. There is room for growth there. So, which means that you're a student for life and whatever you're learning, you have to put it into practice. So in saying all of that, I can honestly say that when I started, when I birthed, I can say projects in Anne, you know, with these, with the two women I mentioned earlier, it was in 2008 and I was working at L'Oreal. And I just remember not taking PSA seriously only because I'm like, this can't be real because I'm doing volunteer day at a big company like L'Oreal and it didn't connect with me until maybe really 2011 when we launched the education program because I remember just listening to a training one time at L'Oreal where someone said, what is the one thing that you can give to people that they will be forever grateful for. And I think someone said, you know, education and someone said money. And <laughs> as I think about this question, it's interesting because, you know, you're making me think that there was a connection there too with my <laughs> corporate life as it relates I think, to. I think, of course, there is a connection. That's just me. <laughs> Because no, but because, and, and, and here's where the connection comes in and it gets very interesting. I worked with C-level, C-suite executives, right? General managers, president, CEOs. So I know what restructures and organizational structures looks like and how you really run a company. You know, when I left L'Oreal in 2013, 
I went to Diva Curl and I left with one of the presidents there that said to me, I know how busy you're starting to get with projects in Anne, but I want you to know that you are the first person I want to take with me on this new journey because this is going to help you in the long run with what you have as a vision for PSA. I kid you not, Colin Walsh said this to me huh. because he said, you're going to have more flexibility without a doubt because I see your dreams. This was in December, 2013. Wow. At Lee's on 47 and 5th. This is how much I remember that day because he wanted me to say yes, you know, to leaving a Fortune 500 company <laughs> as, no, as known as L'Oreal to uh-huh. go to Diva Curl to, you know, put it back to life. That was the company that we were walking into. And I can tell you right now, experiences like that, challenges and just so many greatness, so much great stuff and, and big conflicts and huge decisions and strategies that you've never thought you'd have to be part of really happened in 20 years of my life working in beauty, but it wasn't just beauty. It was really knowing how to put good structure, good people, good culture in the workplace. And I can tell you right now, that's what I'm currently doing with PSA. We've been a mom and pop since 2008, a great mom and pop, because, you know, it was built on love and it's still built on love, Projects in Anne, but it was also built on friends and family that have extremely busy lives outside of giving their time and energy to Projects in Anne for years. So when a company is growing, and I remember, when um, Diva Curl started to really grow back in 2018, I started to really get the sensation and the feeling that, you know, while it's, this is growing, I might as well grow too and maybe grow out of it. And that's, that's what's happening right now within the Projects and Anne organization, meaning We're growing, which is a very good thing. And everything that I've put into practice and implemented and have been part of and directed and advised and negotiated on in my past corporate life is what I'm doing with Projects in Anne right now. And I have to say that it takes a lot of energy, more than it does time than anything else. Because with the energy, with good energy, comes time because if I don't have the energy to do this type of work that is being done right now, it's a good thing I've been prepared for it. Like I said in the past, but it's a different type of feeling when you know that what you're doing has a lot of potential, but at the same time, you're dealing with a country like Haiti that can make you feel or make certain people feel either discouraged, disengaged, or even afraid, you know? And one of the things that I try not to have as a sentiment or feeling is fear. And I have to really say in this moment that my son often reminds me in talking to him, mom, you can't live your life in fear. Let's say that I need to make some big decisions and I talk to him about it. And those are the type of feedback I get from him. So as it relates to my path since 1991, married, and as I just mentioned, my son, my career path has truly made me who I am today. And because of that, I am able to shape what projects in Anne can be. And will be. I think, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it does more in, in so many ways, more than I could, I could hope for actually. But okay. because what I was, what I was saying is that I do see it. That's the reason why I asked the question is because I think in order for you to grow in that way, in order for you to take, you know, basically learn from 
the challenges, the past experiences, mistakes, uh, and all that, all that kind of stuff requires some sort of structure, requires some sort of backbone, you know, and, um, that's what's so beautiful about it. And, and that's why there's so much more, more room to grow because of those experiences, because it's life. And, and if, if you make the best out of these experiences, then, you know, you can make the best out of life. And, and, and I think that's exactly what it means to do good is to make the best you can about life. And it's also to think about the kind of world that we're going to leave behind, you know, and, and for us, even if you want to shrink it down to the kind of Haiti you want to leave behind, that's fine. Or the kind of community you want to leave behind. And it's, it's, it's important because that community grows, that country grows and then the world grows. So all of that is important to our kids. You mentioned your son, I have young ones and I'm like, man, this is, what kind of world are my kids going to be living in when I'm gone or what kind of world they're going to raise their kids in? You know, it's, it's, it's crazy to think sometimes because people don't really seem to care that much about the future, which kind of is, is it's tough to swallow because it feels almost like we're, we're destroying ourselves, you know, uh, and we're, we're forgetting about the basics of humanity of who we are, you know, the, the people that we are and the reason why we actually, you know, we've never been extinct, you know, it's, it's, it's the reason why we've kept growing and, 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 and populating earth is because of our ability to survive and our ability to, to grow and to, um, the word I'm looking for is not coming to evolve. There you go. That's, that's why all of that is so important. That's why I wanted to, to, to have your, perspective on this mission that you're on and that's going to lead to the next question where do you see this mission going in terms of the future you know because obviously we're not going to be doing this for for forever there's going to be a time where you know somebody else will take the reins and and obviously take it to the next level but what are the next steps and where do you see this going and where do you want this to go and smile, you know, uh, in 10, 20, 30 years from now? Wow. <laughs> so, um, okay. That, that is a very big question because I really truly believe that what you create is yours and, um, what you create is your legacy mm -hmm. at the same time. I, when I think of Projects in Anne, it's the people's legacy. Mm -hmm. Because Projects in Anne does not belong to me or anyone. It belongs to the community and, belong, and it belongs to Haiti. Mm -hmm. That's Projects in Anne, which is why I often say Projects in Anne is a community. And, you know, when you build your legacy, you don't build it just for you, you know, and that's my mentality. When I look at where we are and where we've been the past 12 years, and when I think of this campus that is soon to be fully built, <laughs> when I say soon to be, it has already started. Where I see the evolution of projects in Anne, um, the picture is very big. It's uh, nationwide. It doesn't stay in company. It doesn't only live in company. It lives in other communities that have the potential for growth, you know, to better their, their people, their family, you know, the development of, you know, the, the community is so important. So when I think of PSA, I can honestly say that 20, 30 years from now, I would imagine and only hope that you know, the torch is being carried on. And like I said, I would hope nationwide as long as we stay within the mission and the vision. And I think it's pretty clear right now. You know, it's education and community development. And that says a lot for Haiti. It says a lot for the people of Haiti. It says a lot about what I see for the country, you know, I see Projects in Anne in 20, 30 years from now as, you know, it's a, it's a governance. It's a group of people. It's not just a nonprofit organization. It is a full-on governance that is carrying a lot of different 
communities within one country by giving them the tools that they need to make their own life because we're not just going to continuously give, we're giving to create, which is why I said in the beginning, oh. I've created my legacy here, but this isn't just for me. So I think that it's safe to say if I continue to have faith, because, you know, I have to say God's job is never done. Someone very special said to me, said this to me actually recently as it relates to Project St. Anne and said, that means your work is never done. Whether or not 20, 30 years down the line, I'm not as ingrained and as active as I am right now, my soul will always be with Project Simeon because it's going to carry on no matter what. So this isn't a project or a company or a business or an organization that stops running. No, I know for a fact that should it come to even growing bigger, we will have the opportunity to do that. And all we can do and all I can do to make sure that happens is to stay focused on the right purpose and to not get discouraged and to not allow also what you call the bad noises that we have to continuously deal with because this is too good and the need is great in our country. Wow. Yeah. And um, not only am I excited about, you know, all these things you just said, especially you know, the campus and the mission expanding, not just from company, but throughout the country and never ending mission. This is something that also resonated with me because it's true. And, you know, from that perspective, you know, at the end, if whatever you want to call it, you know, whatever good you do, I believe it comes back to you. It's a circle. So it continues the energy, just like energy, the energy is constant, you know, it never stops. It just goes from one location to the other. And that's the point. And that's what doing good does. You know, o overall, that's what it does. You touch someone, somebody, and that person touches somebody else. And that's just the way it goes, you know. And the more you do of that, the better the world is. And it, mm. it sometimes, it, you know, takes me aback a little bit. Like, how, why are not, why are people not doing that more? And including me, including everyone, you know, it's just like, why are we, aren't we doing more knowing the benefits of it, you know, of coming, not only coming, even if it's for selfish reasons, it's going to come back to me anyway. So I might as well do it. And it's true because that's how it happens. There should be a way to, um, to have more people get involved and impact their communities, impact their neighborhoods, whatever it is that you can do and help each other. And that's how, you know, we become stronger and, and that's how we're become happier, healthier, stronger and everything, you know? So it's been a great conversation. Um, I know we're going to be talking again in 2021 because there's a lot going on. <laughs> Not for sure, because this is something that I want more people to be aware of. And I want more people to think, how can I do something? It doesn't have to be, you can start your own, you could help somebody else. There's so many other ways you can impact, even if it's one person that you talk to you know, a, a regular basis. How can you touch their lives? How can you help them in any way? That's, that's enough. If you, even if it's that, that's the only thing you do, you know, but for us to do that on a continue on a continuous basis is what really is what it takes really. So that's why it's, um, it's important. And hopefully we get more out of that, you know, as a result of this episode, hopefully if it's, even if it's just one person, I'm happy with that. So again, I want to thank you. The last question I want to ask before we go is, not only how could people reach Puja Santan, and also if anybody wants to help right now in any possible way, what, what the best way to help is? Well, before I answer your question, I just want to say thank you because I wanted to wait to the very last um, to say that this moment of introduction, you know, through Reggie in 2014, has led us to where we are today. So, you know, never 
you know, I never, I never lose sight really of what you've been bringing to projects in Anne since 2014. I just wanted to make sure that I highlight that in the right moment. And it really actually segues into how can you help projects in Anne? That's one way of helping, you know, volunteering your time, being an advocate, spreading the word. But what's most pressing and most important is our education program. We are constantly in need of sponsors because you can sponsor a child, meaning you get to send a child to school to get an education at really by donating, that is $150 for the year. That's about $13 a month. That's one way of really supporting the organization and supporting the communities and really changing a child's life one day at a time, you know, one family at a time. So with $150, you get to sponsor a child and you can do that on our website, which I'm happy to share with you here. It's um, www.projectsaintanne.org. So it's project in English and S-T-A-N-N-E dot org. We will make sure to leave that also in the, in the show notes where people can see it and click on it. Okay. Another way you can help right now as it relates to the campus, because this is it's a big, it's a, it's a big project. It's the biggest that the community has seen because we're going to have missionary corners. We're going to have, you know, our, <laughs> our entire establishment and the facility is going to cater to students from kindergarten into trade school. I mean, when you think of that aspect, it's not just about building the school. It's about maintaining the school. It's about recruiting the right professors but most importantly right now, yes, if there are people that are listening and that are eager to see something great happen in Haiti, contact us. Um, you can contact us at info at project or myself directly, naika at project And I can tell you right now what we're looking for are people that are really open to invest in something great, to donate to a to an organization that sees the good in people. Education is key. That is our motivation, and that's where we need the support the most. So I thank you, Jeff, for connecting with me today to get to talk about Projects and Anne. We can talk about it for forever. So thank you. Thank you again, Naika, and it's been a pleasure. And thank you for the wonderful work that you guys are doing. It's amazing. Like I said, I know I'm repeating myself, but we'll be talking about this a lot more in the future as, uh, you know, as it progresses. So, yeah, it has been a pleasure. And uh, until next time, have a good one. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Getting Social Podcast. If you've made it that far, it means you probably liked it. In that case, leave us a review, subscribe, and please share it with a friend.